Hello, my name is Farish, and I'm a California-based developer. And in this video, I'm going to cover how to use developer documentation. And to start things off, I'd like to tell a story. So sometime in late 2015, I was asked to make a mobile app. And I was told that they wanted this made for both Android and iOS. And about a few months before this happened, there was a new mobile development framework called React Native. And I decided I was going to use this for this project. There was just one slight problem. With this framework being so new, there wasn't really any tutorials. No courses had existed at the time. So my only real option to figure out how to make things work was to read the developer documentation. Sometimes we run into scenarios where the developer documentation it's going to help you get past the point of being stuck. Learning how to use developer documentation is a great skill to add to your tool set. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover both the Python and MDM documentation. I will also talk about my strategy and thought process when navigating through this. Now, this isn't a one size fits all approach. As part of your coding journey, you will also have to learn what works for you. Let's start things off with the Python documentation. Now I'm over here at the Python documentation website. And before I get started, there's a couple items that I like to point out. First, if you haven't noticed, we're on version 3.7.2. What if you want to find older versions of Python's documentation? Well, right above, there's this dropdown. And to the left side, there's this area called Docs by Version. But if what you see isn't listed, you could click on all versions over here, and this will take you to a long list for each specific version of Python. Second, if you haven't noticed already, there is a lot of links on this front page, lots of information to go through. Now, I'm only going to focus on two of them. But I recommend that when you have free time, explore the documentation. The more you do so, the stronger of a coder you will become. Now, the first item I will be using for this is the quick search, which is on the top right of this page. Then if I scroll a little further down, the second item I'm going to be using is the journal index, which will lead you to a list of all the functions, classes, and terms in the documentation. Now, before I go any further, Let's talk about the hypothetical coding situation to be used with this documentation. I have a Python list of NFL teams in the playoffs. And my goal is to figure out how to put them in alphabetical order. So I'm going to temporarily move away from the documentation and talk about a strategy on how to accomplish this goal. So the first item you need to think about is what are you working with here? In this case, you are working with a list. Then you need to think about the action you're going to take with this list. And since programming languages offer functions to help with data manipulation, so I'm going to suggest that the best strategy is to search for lists in the documentation and see what functions are available to manipulate them. So let's go back to the documentation. So I'm back at the documentation. And I'm going to go to the search bar and search for list. And as you can see, the search results are still loading. There's a lot of information in Python documentation. So I'm going to scroll down and see if there's anything that catches my attention. And number five over here says data structures. As I mentioned earlier in the strategy, we know we're dealing with a list and a list is a data structure. So maybe this will take me to the information I'm looking for. So I'm going to click here and see what information gets brought up. So now that I'm on this page, I'm going to point out the line right after 5.1 more on lists. The list data type has some more methods. Here are all of the methods of the list objects. So before I scroll down, let me give you some recommendations on what to do here. If you don't know a method, Take the time to read it. If you don't understand what you're reading, that's okay. But make a list and run this method on that list and try to analyze the results. 
because this might lead you to understand what exactly is happening with this method. So now I'm going to look for a method that will help me put my list in alphabetical order. Now, I'm not going to go over every method here. And as you can guess, I already know what I'm looking for. But the goal here is to get you used to looking through the documentation. Now, the method that I'm interested in here is sort. And let's examine the information the documentation tells us. If you notice here that this method has two arguments, a key and a reverse. And the none for the key and the false for the reverse are the default values of these arguments. If you don't include them in the method, Python will automatically assume these values. And the documentation does talk about customization and it gives you an option to click on sorted to see more information. But instead, we're going to scroll down further because Python has great documentation. And if you notice here, there's an example that uses most of the list methods. Let's take a look at the sort one. And if you look closely at the fruits list, you can see that the sort method seems to have put it in alphabetical order. So I'm going to now test this out and see what it does to my NFL teams list. Now I'm over here in REPL, which is an interactive coding environment. And I have my NFL teams list on the first line. I'm going to use the sort method exactly how it was written in the documentation. I'm not going to include the arguments because I believe the default values are enough. I'm also going to add a print statement so we can see the results in the console after I hit run. So after hitting run, we can now see my list is in alphabetical order. I'm going to go back to the Python documentation and use the general index to show you how to get the same information. Now I'm back over at the front page of the documentation and I'm going to explore the general index link. So after clicking on that, there is a set of links here that divide the Python documentation into symbols, the underscore, and by each letter of the alphabet. Now, you may have also noticed this full index on one page link. I would not recommend using this as it can turn this into a time consuming endeavor. I'm going to go back to the strategy I discussed earlier. Since I'm working with a list, I'm going to click on the letter L. Now, as you can see, a lot of information has popped up here. And you may be wondering, how do I get to lists quickly? Well, I'm going to use the browser's built-in find in page search feature. And for Chrome, you can open this up by hitting Control F. And in there, I will now type list. And I will keep hitting the down arrow until I find the information that I'm looking for. So here it is, what I was looking for, lists built in class. And I'm going to click on this link and a lot of information is going to come up. And what I want to emphasize here is that in this situation, you should start reading everything here. This page contains all the information that you need to know about working with lists. This page discusses how it's constructed, that list implements all of the common immutable sequence operations. And a little farther down, you will see that sort method that I used earlier. One last item I like to point out. If you were to click on where it says mutable, it will take you to a table of information. This includes built-in methods in Python that list has access to. This information isn't as detailed as what I showed earlier but it is here as a reference. Also, always be sure to scroll down and take a look at the notes. Now I'm going to head on over to MDM and do a similar discussion on how to use it. Now MDM's primary focus is front end technologies, such as JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So if you plan on doing any front end work, this is a great resource to learn. Now, if front end technologies isn't your programming focus, I still recommend you watch this upcoming section. Not because you may have to do front end work in the future, but because many different programming languages and respective frameworks have documentation that operate or behave differently. And just like everything else, the better you get at reading different documentation, the easier it will become to find the information you need quickly. 
I'm over here at MDM. And to start things off, there's two links on the menu bar that I like to discuss. The first being technologies, and the second being references and guides. Technologies gives you a list of all the language-specific documentation in MDM. If you notice by the list, this is all front-end related. References and guides gives you access to tutorials, developer guides, and other information when it comes to front-end technologies. Now, in this section, it is mainly front-end, but there is some server-side website programming here. Just keep in mind that the server-side information is limited in scope and is not as in-depth as the front-end information on MDM. Now, I'm going to go back to Technologies, and I'm going to go ahead and select CSS so you can see how this documentation is formatted. Now, here in the middle, there are three sections I like to point out. CSS Introduction, CSS Tutorials, and CSS Reference. And all the other language documentation here has the same structure. And one thing I would like to inform you is, if you're looking over a language that you don't feel confident in, the tutorial section is great practice material to go along with your Code Academy curriculum. Now, what I like to focus on here is the reference material and how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now, over here at the CSS reference, the first item I like to point out is that this first paragraph gives you quick links to different sections of the reference. Also, as I scroll down a little bit, you can see there's some basic rule syntax examples which is telling you how to exactly write a style block. And if you get stuck, it's okay to copy and paste from the documentation. Now, if I scroll down a little farther, we're gonna hit the keyword index. And this is pretty neat because it gives you a list of everything, but the neat part really comes when you click on one of these items. You are taken to an interactive demonstration page for that selected style. I'm gonna click on font size to demonstrate what happens. Now this initial paragraph gives you an explanation of what that style property sets. Scrolling down a little farther, there's an interactive demo. Clicking on each section of the demo shows how different font sizes affect the size of the text to the right. The nice thing about this demonstration is it allows you to experiment. And you should always experiment when you're not sure what kind of results you're looking for. And working with this environment is easy. I'm going to go ahead and change the 12 pixel font size to 18 pixels. All you have to do is type it in and it automatically runs. And if you make a mistake, you can hit the reset button that's right above the text. Now, before I head on over back to the front page of MDM, I'm going to go over a hypothetical coding situation. If you haven't watched the Python section, please do so, because even though what I'm about to do is similar, I do have to take a slightly different approach. The reason being is different documentation is written differently, which can cause you to alter your strategy. Now I'm gonna talk about the hypothetical coding scenario for the MDM documentation. I have an array of MBA teams, and what I'm going to do is write a filter function to make a new array that only contains the name of MBA teams that are six characters or greater in length. Now, I'm aware that filter exists, but I'm not sure how to use it. So let me talk to you about the strategy for this approach. So the first item to think of is the what. And in this case, what I'm working with is an array. The second part is the goal. I want to use a filter, but I don't know how to use it for this situation. The last part is the action I will take. So I'm gonna search for an array and filter together in the MDM and see what the results bring me. So let's go back to the front page of the MDN documentation. So I'm back over at the MDM. I'm gonna do exactly what I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna search for array and filter together. And about 3,400 results pop up. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. And it's the second result that catches my eye. So I'm gonna click on this link and I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. 
And there is an interactive demonstration for filter right here. Now, if I look closely at this code, this looks similar to what I'm trying to accomplish. So to test this out, I'm going to hit run. And this seems to be working. And because of that, I'm going to copy and paste this code and change it to fit my coding scenario. What I want to emphasize here is there's nothing wrong with doing this. Part of the purpose of documentation is to give you what the code looks like for you to use. So I'm going to head on over to an interactive coding environment that has that array of MBA teams that I want to filter. So I'm over here in REPL, and I'm going to paste that code that I grabbed from MDM. And I'm going to manipulate it to fit this situation. So right here, we have this const results equal words, which was the name of the array from MDM. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to MBA teams. And I'm also going to replace each instance of the word word with team because that fits the scenario here. Lastly, if you haven't noticed, this filter was looking for any word with a length greater than six. In my scenario, I'm looking for any team with a length equal or greater than six. So I'm going to change this to reflect that scenario. So I'm going to hit run. And there is the result on the right. And if you notice, the hawks and the heat are excluded from the result array, demonstrating that this filter worked. Documentation isn't the easiest thing to dive into. Hopefully this video helps you start learning how to go through documentation. Now, if you want to join the conversation, please leave a comment below. And for future videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. Happy coding.